heavy metals poisoning, brain injury, and clandestine weather modification programs. Connecting the dots. For decades, we have known that heavy metals and chemicals can cause grave physical harm. Going back to Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, we have known and been amply warned of the serious consequences of using or being exposed to these poisons in our daily activities. Thousands of these are well-documented carcinogens. Now, however, there is another far more insidious layer of toxicity that is not being addressed at all in any mainstream corporate controlled news, and it is affecting our very survival. For more than a decade, first the United States and then Canada's citizens have been subjected to a 24-7, 365-day aerosol assault over our heads made of a toxic brew of poisonous heavy metals, chemicals, and other dangerous ingredients. None of this was reported by any mainstream media. The U.S. Department of Defense and military have been systematically blanketing all our skies with chemtrails, also known as stratospheric aerosol geoengineering. Our once blue sky has vanished and has been replaced by a grayish-white toxic haze that blots out and greatly diminishes our usual sunshine. Military and commercial planes are involved in more than 60 secret operations. Last year I flew across the country. I saw a United Airlines jet flying below us at about 37,000 feet, spraying a black aerosol that went for miles and miles across the sky. This clandestine program now includes aerosol spraying planes in North America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, all NATO countries. No one is held accountable while we all continue to be poisoned daily. The U.S. military has been spraying chemical and biological weapons in open-air testing over civilian populations since the 1940s. They are called vulnerability tests. The military has admitted this practice. With all of these poisons surrounding our every breath, it is not surprising to see a dramatic increase in illness. There's an increase in cardiac deaths and upper respiratory illnesses, asthma, chronic bronchitis, lung cancer, and often multiple chronic illnesses. Chemtrails toxicity has already dramatically affected our deteriorating collective health. The significant increase in heart disease and various upper respiratory illnesses has been linked to a vast increase in particulate matter in our air. Coronary heart disease is now the leading cause of death in the United States. One out of five Americans are affected. In Canada, every seven minutes someone dies of heart disease. In the United States, 16.4 million adults have asthma and 7 million children have it. Chronic bronchitis and emphysema. 9.8 million Americans were diagnosed with chronic bronchitis this past year. Emphysema the figure is 3.8 million. Total 37 million Americans are afflicted with respiratory diseases. In Canada, 2.4 million have been diagnosed with asthma. Particulate matter in air pollution. Particulate matter consists of tiny particles, 1 70th the thickness of a single human hair. These particles can lodge in the deepest part of your lungs. Over a period of time, they damage lung function. They cause various upper respiratory illnesses, coronary heart disease, and premature aging and death. Particulate matter can also exacerbate any existing illness. Unanswered questions. Does hazardous particulate matter act in synergistic ways in human bodies, as do endocrine disrupting chemicals? How does particulate matter affect millions who already have multiple chronic illnesses? Brain injury. 
the deterioration of cognitive function. Our immune system is already under siege daily. And this has resulted in millions, possibly billions of people with not just one illness, but often multiple ones. The skin, the largest organ in our body, is a permeable membrane. This means that invisible toxins in our air, including chemtrails and other highly dangerous chemicals, go right into our skin. Poisoned rainwater or snow touching our skin does the same thing. When the air we breathe is filled with a dangerous assortment of toxins, with each breath we take, these poisons assault our entire immune system. These poisons also affect our brain and thus our cognitive function. Aluminum is another major component in these aerosols. Pesticide Action Network North America lists aluminum as toxic to humans. Yet aluminum is commonly used in vaccines, deodorants, antiperspirants, over-the-counter medications, soft drink, beer cans, aluminum leeches from the cans, baking powder, cake mixes, processed cheese, and other food products and additives. Aluminum accumulates in the brain, tissues, and to a lesser amount, the bones. It causes brain degeneration, dysfunction, and damage due to the blockage and reduced blood flow and oxygen of brain arteries. The brain shrinks as brain cells die. This causes dementia. Symptoms include emotional outbursts, paranoia, forgetfulness, and memory loss, speech incoherence, irritability, diminished alertness, changes in personality, and poor bad judgment. All these are on the rise, as more than 4 million Americans are afflicted. The front page of the New York Times had a headline, More with Dementia, Wander from Home. Alzheimer's dementia can only be accurately diagnosed after death, when a post-mortem can be done. However, heavy metal poisoning can be diagnosed through lab testing, but this is rarely done for basic checkups. What is not addressed in this increase in dementia is the more than 10 years of breathing chemtrails with nano-aluminum coated fiberglass. Billions of tons have been sprayed on us. Sorry to say this, folks, but even if we got the majority of the Americans to wake up, got them out there screaming, screaming that they stop dumping these toxic chemicals, these biological agents, that are actually destroying life itself. Even if we were successful at this point, the military has a very good argument. The argument would be that, well, it's been so obvious that we've been dumping chemicals for years, 24-7, 365 days a year, for years and years and years obvious in your face, your silence would be considered consent. The other argument would be ignorance of the law is no defense. There is a law on the books and that's titled chemical and biological warfare and there is a section that is restrictions on use of human subjects for testing of chemical or biological agents. Section 1520A. Prohibited activity. See, this is when I get embarrassed to be an attorney. Listen to this. The Secretary of Defense may not conduct directly or by contract any test or experiment involving the use of chemical agents or biological agents on a civilian population or any other testing of a chemical agent or biological agent on human subjects. 
That's clear, right? Very clear. Well, there's a section B, exceptions. <laughs> the exceptions, the prohibition in subsection A of this section does not apply to a test or experiment carried out for any of the following purposes. One, any peaceful purpose that is related to a medical, therapeutic, pharmaceutical, agricultural, industrial, or research activity. That pretty much covers the gamut. That pretty much covers the entire field of testing and experiments. Two, any purpose that is directly related to protection against toxic chemicals or biological weapons and agents. Well, they have to know what the toxic chemicals do in order to learn how to protect human subjects from those agents. And three, any law enforcement purpose, including any purpose related to riot control. Well, that could cover anything as well, because it's very vague. But C, informed consent is required. The Secretary of Defense may conduct a test or experiment described in subsection B of this section only if informed consent to the testing was obtained from each human subject in advance of the testing on that subject. Well, that's good, isn't it? Informed consent. Informed consent we get from doctors and therapists and psychiatrists, right? What is that informed consent? Well, you go to see a psychiatrist and they may tell you a couple of side effects of the medications that they're prescribing for you, but they don't tell you all of them. And they consider that informed consent. They don't tell you. They cause a whole lot of very dangerous, adverse effects. But the military wouldn't even have to tell you what the effects were they could simply argue that your ignorance of the law is absolutely no defense. The law was on the books and it was there to provide informed consent. And they would win. They would win on any, any ludicrous, absurd, inane argument today because that's just the way the courts are working today. But they would absolutely argue that this law, being of public knowledge, is informed consent. So, that's it, folks. Um, yeah, we are absolutely being not tested on, not experimented on. We are being slowly killed off by the chemical and biological agents. They have been spraying into the air. They're falling down into the ground. They're killing life itself. And ignorance of the law is no defense.